Today I wanted to show you one of the ways that you can ply your hand spun yarn using a center pull ball. I've recently finished spinning this beautiful fiber and so I have a single ply on my bobbin. I spin pretty thin so it's got a lot of twist and I know it's strong enough to use this technique. If your single ply pulls apart pretty easily, it's probably not going to be strong enough. I was lucky to find this used yarn winder and honestly some of the older pieces of equipment are just so much better and more durable so I'm really excited to be able to use this one. You can also create one of these balls using your hands, but I am not very good at that, so I am using the winder instead. For some consistency, I set up my spinning wheel like I am spinning, except that I take off the tension of the brake and of the belt at the back, and that allows me to control how much and how fast it's coming off of my bobbin onto the wool winder. Usually on a winder you have this little metal arm and so you make sure that you put your yarn through that and I have tied a little knot in the end and started it on the loop there and then all you do is crank the handle and it moves around in a very random way but it's actually creating a really strong structured center pull ball. This is honestly one of my favorite parts. I just put on my audiobook and I like watching the different colors kind of translate into the ball as it's spinning. And you can see that without the tension on my spinning wheel, it spins pretty freely and I'm able to keep enough consistent tension to have consistency in my center pull ball. Because I have quite a lot of spin on my single ply here, I know it's strong enough, but I also have to be careful that I don't get any loops or kinks or anything. So having that consistent tension is why I keep it on my wheel when I'm putting it into the ball. And voila, when you take it off, I love how it looks. It's You can see how it's kind of got its own pattern of how it creates the ball. Uh, it looks really neat. I like the colorway as well. And so there you go. This is what it looks like when it's finished off of the winder. And the reason why this is so great is you can easily access the inside strand and the outside strand. And that is what you're going to put together as your two plies that you'll spin back on your wheel. For me, I like to just drop it on the floor in between my feet. I have a double treadle spinning wheel so that works out for me but you can put it wherever it's most comfortable the main thing is that you are going to need both hands to be working this to make sure you get out any kinks or loops as you're spinning and of course don't forget to put your band back on and your brake and when you are plying you're always spinning in the opposite direction of what you were spinning your single ply in so for me I always do that to the left so you can see I'm spinning to the left one of the many reasons I really like this technique is I'm not having to also manage the tension or spin of my bobbins, which sometimes if you're applying pretty fast, they can get twisted or caught up. All of the tension that is pulling up my single plies is really coming from my spinning wheel. So I have a lot of control over what's happening. Now, anytime you're plying, you're likely to get some twisties that are going to either fold back over themselves or make it a little tough to spin. And again, when I get to one of those, like this one you can see here, I just give it a little bit of tension, pull it out and keep going. And usually it is pretty easy to do. And another way that you can ply obviously is to split your fiber up over two bobbins. But the issue is you might not spin at the exact same amount. And so likely you're gonna have a little more left on one bobbin than the other. So this is kind of a nice no waste way that you can ply. And as your bobbin starts to get used up, it pulls one of the strings from the outside and the inside. So you can see it ends up looking a little bit weird as I'm spinning it out but that's all right. It doesn't really get tangled or have any tension. And at the very end, you end up with this nice little loop, which I used to hook over my skein winder that just attaches onto my wheel. And then I was easily able to just take what I had finished and put it into my skein winder. So you can see in the end, I have a really nice even twist. And I think a lot of that happens because you you have so much control over tension as you're spinning when you're spinning from a center pull ball. I hope this is helpful. If you give it a try, let me know how it goes. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment and I'm happy to respond. 
Spinning is one craft that definitely requires a lot of practice. So if you are getting frustrated or your threads are snapping or this isn't working out for you, just keep going and keep trying. Try adding a little more spin to make your fiber stronger and hopefully this works out for you with more practice. 